starting center fielder. And we are underway here at Reckling Park. The crowd's still filing in. They're expecting a pretty good crowd tonight here. Yeah, we see a great baseball park here at Reckling. They had a really good turnout in the Notre Dame series. Now, obviously, with number two LSU in town, expecting the fans to come out and pack the diamond as well. Paxton Kling, Stephen Milam, and Tommy White, first three hitters in this LSU lineup here tonight. They could pitch there from Fernandez. That's a called strike, so 0 2 hole for Kling here to get things started at the top of the first inning. We talk about that that two pitch mix, you know, 91, 92 sinker slider, really good job of so far establishing the corners. 0-2 pitch, just missed outside, one and two now. And that's not a bad idea trying to expand the zone and change his eyes going low and away, about two ball lengths off the outer half. Here's the one two, evens the count two two. On the season so far. Kling, who's a sophomore, again, starting center fielder, off to a nice start, hitting 400. Eight for his first 20. Has a double, one home run, and five RBI so far. Here's the 2-2. Swing and a miss. And strikeout number one. That's a good start there for Robert Fernandez. Yeah, that's what you want, establishing the zone early. Does a good job of mixing up, you know, his fastball and his off speed. We take one more look at that final pitch. You see the swing and miss stuff over the inner half of the plate as Kling goes over the top for the first step. But exactly what you want for Robert Fernandez. This is a guy that missed a lot of time over the years. Supposed to be a start, start, Saturday starter at junior college last year. Got hurt, but he's healthy here in 2024, and they're hoping for big things for him as the Owls look to take that next step. Yeah, Fernandez out of Miami, Florida, into this Rice program. First pitch fouled off there to Stephen Milam, starting second baseman for LSU. He'll be followed by Tommy White, the player of the year, the All-American, third baseman for the Tigers. Milam's just a freshman in this LSU lineup, and he too, just like Kling, off to a nice start, hitting 4.09 right now. Six RBIs early in this season through LSU's first eight games. Milam from Las Cruces, New Mexico. Ground ball base hit into right field. First hit of the game for the Tigers. Gallo gave it a go there, but perfectly placed into right field. And the LSU Tigers have a runner on here with one out. And Brings it's good. Tommy White. It's a really good defensive swing, as we see right here. It's a fastball. They try to go up inside. He ends up missing towards that middle third part of the plate. And he's able to shoot it through that right side of the infield for a leadoff base hit with one out. All right, brings up the number three hitter in this LSU lineup, Tommy White. Coming off a fantastic season last year. Player of the year, can it? Grab ball shortstop. Al's trying to turn two, and they do. Well done, Royo to Gallo over to Landon. The LSU Tigers, and there he is, Cade Anderson, the lefty. Kyle getting a start. He's a, he's a freshman for Jay Johnson. It was his second appearance and second start from the freshman Louisiana native. He last towed the rubber February 19th against Central Arkansas. And in his collegiate debut against the Bears, he tossed four innings of three-hit ball, working around one, one run to secure his first career win as the Tigers went on to win 4-3. to three. In that game, he threw 70 pitches, 40 for strikes. As they look to build him up, this is a guy that missed time in high school with Tommy John's surgery, but he's healthy in 2024. It's a fastball, 93 to 95 with good arm side run, really nasty curveball and a changeup. Well, with a lot of baseball coming up in the next several days for both teams, because LSU will remain here in Houston, part of the Minute Maid Park. The Astros Foundation hosting a big tournament at Minute Maid Park and Rice hosting Stanford. You're going to see a lot of, I think we might see some arms here tonight. Take a look at the batting order. For the Rice Owls, you get a look at it right there. Trayton Rank will lead it off for Rice. And especially Rank with getting a start there in the right field tonight. Especially with this being a Wednesday start, and both these teams are turning to action on Friday. Maybe a Johnny Holstaff situation. 
Count even 1-1 one, one from Anderson leading off. It'll be Rank followed by Kite McDonald and Pierce Gallo for head coach Jose Cruz, Jr. So Rank is one of two transfers joined by Davion Hickson from Florida State. Last year, he hit 248 in 47 games, 39 starts with five doubles, two triples, 10 RBIs, and 23 runs scored. Tried to hold up there. Evens account 2 2. It's Michael Durantes, the first base umpire. Umpire tonight, Joe Harris behind the plate, Durantes at first, Jose Ortiz at second, and Michael Banks at third as part of the four man crew. Here's the 2 2 from Anderson. Full count on the leadoff hitter, Trayton Rank. Rank's hitting 125, so a slow start with the bat so far. This three for his first 24 with an RBI, but the guy, Jose Cruz Jr., feels like can get that confidence back in the box. Not afraid to put him in that leadoff spot here. Yeah, we talked about his numbers last year for the Seminoles. If he can have that production find its way over here on University Boulevard, it's going to be a great season on South Main. 3-2, fouled off again by Trayton Rank. Rice coming in with a 3-4 and four record. LSU off to a 7-1 and one start. Their lone loss against Stony Brook. Three two ground ball, third base. Tommy White scoops and fires over to first base. Jared Jones and out number one here bottom of the first inning. Not much is going to get past Tommy White down there at third base. Now he's the number one third baseman by D1 Baseball's top 50 third baseman for 2024. And look at him, he's a vacuum over there. You see that lateral range going to his left and then a good two-step gather and throw. And he's got the hair. He's got it all working for him <laughs> here in 2024. I was watching him during batting practice just launching baseballs here, just uh, the, the total package. All right, that's going to be fielded by Anderson over to first base. Not in time. And Kite McDonald is on base. Replay coming up here. Take a look at it. He does a really good job of challenging. You see him get down the line quickly. Obviously, Kate Anderson, once you make that throw, you are a defender, so he has to come off the mound quickly, and the turn and throw just pulls Jones off over at first. Pierce Gallo now at the plate for the Rice Owls. The... Uh, Senior hitting 160, he's a junior for Rice. Starting second baseman. He'll be followed by Nathan Becker. That was ruled a, an infield hit though, they had to make sure. Good call, first hit of the game for Rice. And it was going to be a bang-bang play. Anderson's throw, and we, we talked about, you know, pulling Jones a little bit, but even still, the quick feed of McDonald to get down the line. Great job of executing small ball to get their first base runner tonight. One-one, fouled off right side. The wind is whipping around here inside of Reckling Park uh, during pregame. It was going left to right, then it kind of switched around. I was talking to Jose Cruz Jr., and there's the flags right there. He said, yeah, we don't know exactly what's going to happen tonight, but the ball's probably going to carry pretty well here. You can see some pullovers and sleeves of fans in the stands here at Reckling. The cold front has come in, but a great night for baseball. Yeah, still relatively comfortable there. Ground ball up the middle. LSU will turn it around. Milam to Braswell to Jared Jones, and that'll do it. Double play ball, just like the top of the first ended for LSU. Same for right. It's Robert Fernandez, who's getting the start tonight for the Rice Owls. As we mentioned a few moments ago with tonight's ball game, got Rice has Stanford coming in this weekend. LSU staying in town, part of the Minute Maid Park Classic. Good chance to see some, get some work in for a lot of these pitchers on each staff here tonight. So we'll see how long the starters go. Josh Pearson leads it off for LSU, junior out of West Monroe, Louisiana.
to batting 250 on the season. Last season, batted 226, but he wasn't afraid of the moment. 11 of his 31 hits came in the NCAA tournament last season on their way to Omaha and, of course, winning it all. Well, if you're going to get hot, that's what when you want to do it, right? Absolutely. Yeah, national title run for LSU, and sure we'll talk a lot about their storied history and the job Jay Johnson has done now in year number three as head coach. Here's the one-two, fouled off left side. So both these pitchers had a clean first inning. They surrendered a hit but had a defense clinic behind them. Robert Fernandez benefiting from a 6-4-3 double play. Kate Anderson closing the first with a 4-6-3 double play of his own. Hayden Tavinsky on deck for LSU, the designated hitter. He'll be followed by Brady Neal. LSU's offense off to a nice start here through the first eight games. For Rice, the bats have been hit and miss so far, but talking with Jose Cruz Jr. before the game, Kyle, he was saying, hey, I, I love where our pitching is right now. And, you know, these guys get some more confidence. I feel really good that we can start getting some momentum offensively with the bats. And this has all been a building block as obviously he's in his third season back at his alma mater, but trying to get the culture he wanted. He really felt as we look at ball four, he finally got the culture and the brand of baseball he wanted. Team's gotten faster every year. Team has gotten better every year. You know, the guys they're recruiting now are replacing as they go year to year. But finally, he felt like you know going in through his whole preseason, this is what he wanted to see. Been excited for them to run out of lights against Notre Dame two weeks ago. And now, obviously, another great test here against the defending national championship Tigers tonight. There's Travetsky, the senior out of Shreveport. 6'3", 228. They got some big guys in this lineup that can swing the bat, no doubt about it. He is one of them. He's off to a pretty good start. The plate hitting 321 so far. He started every game for him. One home run and eight RBI so far early in this season. And this is a guy that's one of three catchers that they can have. He caught starting at the end of April last season, started 20 games at the position. Preseason all SEC second team selection, just he and White preseason all South, uh, Southeastern Conference players coming back this year. Two and one count now on Tavinsky. Yeah, when you come into this LSU program, I mean, they're getting the cream of the crop across the country. You better be ready to produce to find your way in this lineup here. Two one swung on. Just got a piece of that one. And they're excited to be here, not just tonight, but this weekend as well. They have a big alumni base here in Houston, as we can hear some of their fans that have showed out tonight in the purple and gold. But it's also a great recruiting bed. So not just as a great college baseball this weekend, it's a great footprint for high school baseball in the recruiting market. Absolutely. He'll take advantage of that. Houston is a hotbed for talent. LSU will be here through Sunday, as a matter of fact. Bryce welcomes in Stanford here to Reckling Park Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Three-two count now. Tavinsky, runner going. Sharply hit ball, but foul down the left field line. That's a good swing by Tavinsky, turning on it. Just obviously going foul, but a good job of barreling it up on the payoff pitch. We talked about, you know, guys getting hot at the right time. Pearson, of course, was one form last year. So was Tavinsky. Had 10 home runs in a 23-game stretch. Now ball third base. Rydell fires over to Landon West. And out number one. Runner moves up to uh, second base. So Pearson to second on the ground ball out. Brings up the catcher, Brady Neal, for LSU. In the six hole tonight for Jay Johnson. And he, of course, is someone they're happy to see healthy in 2024, batting 267 on the season. He started their first 26 games last year before being dealt with the back injury. Breaking ball just outside. First pitch there to Brady Neal. 
Jared Jones on deck for LSU. Already some activity down in the Rice bullpen. But Jose Cruz Jr. said that was probably going to be the case tonight. He'd hope to get maybe two innings, maybe a little bit more from Fernandez. And then let some other guys get some work in. Here's the 2-0. And they're a call strike. Say so he's got to be careful with that look back there at second. The pitch count got down to two as he finally came home. Say so on a pitch clock violation, it's a charged ball to the hitter. In a hitter's count, you don't want to improve it by adding a ball to it. Fouls that one left side. Fans will chase that one a little bit. Evens the count now two and two. 22 pitches so far there for Fernandez. Really nice crowd here tonight. Last 10, 15 minutes really started to fill up. Uh, that one's high to evens the uh, full count now. Three and two. With Pearson on second base for LSU. So another walk given up by Fernandez. That's two now in the inning. And he's had deep counts in all three of these bats so far. He walked Pearson, yep. opened it up. Tavinsky was a 3-2 battle that he finally won with that ground out. And then, of course, Lee, losing Neal there as well. Jack Ben Shoshan getting loose in the Rice bullpen. Andy Garza, the starting catcher for the plate. For the Tigers, one of making sure they're on the same page, but also just making sure game plan wise. And we talked about the short leash tonight, making sure they're going to get as much out of them as they can before handing the ball over potentially to Jack Ben Shoshan, who we showed a moment ago. One out here, two on for LSU. First pitch called strike in there from Fernandez. Well, that's always what you want to see following a mound is this guy get over the plate with the strike, but also to get over with an off speed pitch. A lot of confidence to have it. Definitely playing Jones to pull. Big gap on that right side of the infield. Here's the 0-2 from Fernandez. The yeah, off-speed pitch just slipping out of the hand. Pitched him backwards a little bit, especially, you know, following a walk. Off speed on the first one, comes in with the fastball for strike two, I and mean, that one right there trying to see if he can get on top of it and just kind of drops to the side as it comes out early. Mac Bingham on deck for LSU. Two walks allowed so far in this top of the second inning by Fernandez. Most of this Rice lineup has been pretty steady most of this early part of the season. A couple of tweaks in the lineup tonight with rank and right field and the freshman Landon West playing first base for the Owls tonight. Here's the 2-2. Swung on. That's going to be misplayed in left field there by Cumming. And the runner will come in. That is Pearson coming around after Cumming misread that one. He was trailing there in foul territory, Kyle. All of a sudden it shifted and it landed about 10 feet inbounds. Well, and as we've talked, you know, the wind is 
gusting out towards from left out towards center here at Reckling Park tonight. And we saw him come under, and I'm not sure if maybe at some point during its way down it crossed the path with the light because, as you mentioned, it was standing in foul territory, looking like he was waiting on it, waiting on it, and then all of a sudden picked it up, and it's 10 feet behind him. So watch as we see him come over. He does a great job of ranging in. Looked like it was going to be a foul play ball. And you see right here, all of a sudden, turning and going back out as it falls behind him. And Tiger's able to capitalize to bring home Pearson for an early one to nothing lead. Second hit of the game for LSU. one nothing lead as Pearson comes across. And still one out here in the top of the second inning. That was pitch number 30 from Robert Fernandez. Here's Mac Bingham now. Senior out of San Diego, California. Being in the starting left fielder tonight for LSU. And this is a guy excited to find himself in the purple and gold and back under head coach Jay Johnson, who coached him his first two years at Arizona. Brings veteran experience. Played, of course, in the World Series himself in 2021 under coach Johnson, which coincidentally was his last year before he became the skipper at LSU. Rice going to be able to get an out here. If they can execute this, they do. They get Jared Jones. A little mental error there by Jones. And that is out number two here at the top of the second. Yeah, I'm not sure if he got mistaken on what the count was, but it was interesting as we take one more look. There's a backdoor pick here from West. Obviously, you saw the big lead, so maybe there was a missed sign, but he was out in no man's land halfway between first and second. So it becomes a 2-3-4 put out. Inside, that's going to get Bingham. Right in the back there. So he'll take the trot down there to first base with two outs here in the second. Yeah, so you get the out, and then all of a sudden you plunk a guy, and then you go right back to it. And unfortunately, it looks like that's going to close the book on Fernandez's time on the mound. Can't close the book on him, obviously, with two on. But as we take one more look at this pitch, yeah, it just looks like he doesn't get on top of it. And Bingham's able to just turn and wear it right off the numbers. Looks to get the final out against the final batter of their first time through in the LSU Tigers. So, Sean, local product from right here in Houston, St. John's High School, in fact. 10 to 15 minutes away from this Rice campus. Michael Braswell, the third at the plate now, number nine hitter in this LSU lineup. Two on now, here with two outs in the second inning for LSU tonight. Strike there from Shosha on deck, leadoff hitter. Paxson Kling for the Tigers. Here's the 2 1. A little tight inside. So another arm up as well in the rice bullpen. Got word we might see another walk. We still could, obviously, but, you know, don't want to have the free pass issued by the first guy coming in. Now we'll see what he can do to battle against the former Gamecock in Michael Broswell. Appeared in 105 games over the past two seasons with them. Well, he'll take the uh, trot down to first base, and the Tigers are going to load him up here with two outs. Uh, Shoshan gives up the walk to Braswell. And this is just unfortunate for the Owls here to start this in, it, not just with how they started the game, but in this inning. You've had three walks and a hit by pitch. And, of course, the ball lost in the lights, being how you're down one to nothing. Brady Neal's on third base. Mac Bingham on second base right now for LSU. Swung on, line drive left field. That's going to fall right in front of coming. Couple of runs come in for LSU. 
And it's a 3-0 lead for the Tigers. And Paxton Kling does a great job of barreling up the very first pitch thrown home from back Ben Show, Sean. We take one more look at it. The effort for coming in left field. We see him coming in. He leaves his feet, unfortunately, just unable to glove it as it pops out in front of him. And the Tigers are able to plate two more as Brady Neal and Mac Bingham come home to make this a 3-0 ball game. Yeah, I thought for a moment uh, Brendan Cumming had a shot at that one. Made a dive at it, but that one fell in for the two RBI single for Kling. And the freshman Stephen Milam now at the plate. Runners on the corners for LSU. Swung on. Fly ball right field. That will hold up. Rank gets underneath that one. And that is out number three here in the top of the second inning. But LSU does some damage. It's a 3-0 lead now through an inning and a half here at Reckling Park in Houston. 3-0 Tigers. Pushed across three runs in the top of the second. They lead to 3-0 now. And starting pitcher Cade Anderson now facing the four, five, and six hitters for Rice. Starting with Nathan Becker, the designated hitter for the Owls. He'll be followed by Manny Garza and hot-hitting Jack Rydell. See Anderson obviously looking to see if he can avoid repeating what Robert Fernandez did in the top frame. They both mirrored the script in the first inning, and now he's got three run supports behind him. That one's going to drift over the LSU dugout. Sea of purple over there right behind him. Of course, you look at LSU, Kyle, and their alumni base is very strong in this part of the country, specifically here in Houston as well. I'm told it's their number one alumni base. So a lot of fans here in Houston getting the chance to check out the Tigers here tonight. I'm sure they'll make their way to Minute Maid Park this weekend. Yeah, Coach Jay Johnson said he was excited to travel to Houston for a number of reasons, but that big alumni base is one of them because they always get great support when they play here. Swing and a miss by Becker goes down on strikes. That's the first strikeout for Anderson tonight. Freshman off to a nice start for the Tigers. And this is a moment he's been waiting for since eighth grade. He's always wanted to be an LSU Tiger. And obviously the injury in high school. Uh, Coach Jay Johnson actually said it probably helped them because if he had continued to pitch at the track record he was, there's a very good chance he'd have gone to the draft. Instead, now they find him healthy on the mound as a freshman and a big piece of what they look to do going forward, defending their national championship and beyond. Ball strike. Now 0-2 count on Manny Garza, the starting catcher for Rice, a junior out of Rio Grande City. Garza chased that one. And another strikeout for Anderson. Here's what we talk about, you know, the big stuff. Obviously, three-pitch mix. As we take one more look at this one here, challenging him with the high fastball, bringing the heat, and getting him to swing under it for the second straight strikeout in as many batters faced. Coach Jay Johnson talking about his start at against UCA. You know, thought Cade was great. It was awesome that he's at LSU. He's a pitcher, competitor. He's got the right character, makeup, and maturity on the mound, even for a freshman. Brings up Jack Rydell, the starting third baseman for the Owls. Hitting sixth in the Rice lineup tonight. Showed some power already this season. He's hitting 259 entering tonight. Already three home runs and nine RBIs early in this season. Yeah, you talk about the nine RBIs. Manny Garvers are right in front of him as eight. And so when you talk about a lineup that hasn't had much change, having guys that can consistently get on in front of you, deliver those RB opportunities for the guy behind you. And it seems time after time again, when Rydell's gotten his opportunity, he's found a way to bring guys home. Rydell, local product from this greater Houston area, Memorial High School. Began his career at North Carolina before joining the Rice program. And that's the thing with the transfer portal and everything these days. Just because you lose a local guy, you know, you'll hear coaches now say, hey, be nice to him. You never yeah. know. He might find exactly. his way back home. Now more than ever, right? Exactly. With the, uh, with the portal. So 
Certainly a factor now in every sport. All right, Rydell lays off of that one. First walk of the contest for Kate Anderson. Landon West now at the plate for Rice. How'd you like to come to the park? The freshman out of Katy, Texas, has not played all year, and you're told you're going to start tonight against LSU at first base. <laughs> yeah, obviously a big, tall task, but a great opportunity for the local product. It's an all-district selection at catcher last season at Katie Tompkins High School where he hit 330. Now we'll see what he can do with his first swing of the bat in the Rice Owls uniform. 0-2 count now on West. Yeah, he came out of the dugout when I was interviewing Jose Cruz Jr. and he pointed at him, he said, that kid's gonna start tonight, make his debut. We've shown a lot of promise uh, for this Rice program. Swing and a miss on the strikeout. So Andrew to a 19-12-1 campaign last season and now getting his first look here on South Main in the Owls uniform. Another young arm in this pitching staff for Jose Cruz Jr. And first up for Jake Melvin, he gets to face Tommy White, the All-American. Yeah, you talked the last half inning about Landon West making his debut against number two LSU, and he was facing a freshman now we have a freshman facing a veteran and one of the best third basemen in all of college baseball in his debut on the mound. 2-0 count now on White. His first at bat in the first inning grounded into a 6-4-3 double play. White off to a pretty good start at the plate, hitting 333 this season. One home run and seven RBI. Fly ball, shallow right field. And that is out number one for the Rice Owls as Trayton Rank comes in and makes the play. Pierce Gallo was backtracking a little bit before Rank called him off. And out number one, it's a big opening out there for the freshman Jake Melvin. Yeah, Gallo did a good job of tracing that ball all the way, but then, of course, yielding to Rank when he came in with the overcall for the first out. Josh Pearson now at the plate for LSU. He's a cleanup hitter for the Tigers. Walked his last at bat. Pops that one up. And Jack Rydell, you hear the ooze from the crowd there because the wind is certainly a factor. I'm looking at the flags right now. They are moving. And yeah, that was a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, he was all smiles, you know, yeah. as that ball was thrown around the horn. He's playing it off like, yeah, I meant to do that. But as we look at the flags gusting, out beyond the left field wall. Definitely had that ball swirling on its way down in the infield. Two quick outs here in the third inning. Hayden Travinsky at the plate now for the Tigers. He had a ground ball out in his first at bat in the second inning. Ground ball to third base. Let's get the uh, DH in this Tiger lineup. He's a senior. Entered tonight hitting 321. That one inside, and right on the backside of Tavinsky. He's the second hit by pitch we have seen go off the Tigers' uniforms. This one looked like it hit him more on the arm. Last inning, Mac Bingham took one right off the letters. To take one more look at it, see exactly where this hit him. You see, as it, he'll he'll turn in, and there was a grimace. Luckily, he's got that pad yeah. on his elbow, but right on that back side of it. Yeah. yeah, he he's very lucky that pad was there, as that looked like a dangerous situation as he's walking to first base. But he appears to be okay. Yeah, he'll shake that off. A runner on now with two outs here to the third. Brady Neal now coming at the plate for LSU. He walked and scored part of that three-run second inning for LSU. He 
Daniels, a sophomore, getting the start here on the plate, hitting 267 on the year. A couple of doubles, a home run, and six RBI. Well struck ball deep into the night here in Reckling Park. What a shot. Brady Neal, two run, home run. And it's a 5 nothing lead now for the Tigers. Does a great job of just turning on over that pitch, sending it out towards the right center gap. It's 375 in the power alleys. And he got all of it as he picked up his second home run of the season. We take one more look at it. It's an inside fastball, and he's able to lift it. What a big ride he gave into the right center gap, and another crooked inning for them as they lead 5 to nothing. Remember, we talked about the back injury last year. They're happy that he's healthy. He only had three home runs in those 26 games last year. He now has two through the first eight here in 2024. That was a no-doubter on that swing by Brady Neal. Jared Jones now steps in for the Tigers. He reached base back in the second inning, and he was picked off. His second at bat. Yeah, just a really weird situation where it was a 2 2 pitch, and on the throw, he may have been looking for a hit and run or something because he was way out there, more than halfway to second in no man's land. Five runs, four hits so far for LSU. Three runs in the second, two across so far here in the third. There's a freshman All-American last season. Looks poised to take over first base. Rice's homestand opening here tonight against LSU. And as I mentioned earlier, Stanford is coming to town for a three-game series, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Next Tuesday, Prairie View A&M is here at Reckling Park. And then it's time to pack the bags, uh, Kyler, heading to Hawaii for five days. Not a bad spot to Not go play some gig. baseball, yeah. Not a bad gig right there. They'll play four games against the University of Hawaii there. Travel back and get back into the swing of things as it gets a little bit closer to conference play. Inside, Jared Jones now heads down to first base. Another walk given up by the Yow's pitching staff. That's now four walks allowed so far by the Yow's staff. Yeah, and the two hit by pitch, so it's been yeah. the three passes issued that have obviously proved costly. Every walk has come home, every hit by pitch has come home, and now we'll wait to see what happened with Jones being the most recent one. This is Mac Bingham, the number eight hitter for LSU, starting left fielder. He was hit by a pitch in the last inning, but wound up scoring as well, part of that three-run frame. We talked to him, obviously, being happy to be back under head coach Jay Johnson, who he played for two years at Arizona. But last season at Arizona, was probably one of the most prolific batters in the Pac-12, batting 360 and slugging 573 with a team-high 91 hits, 20 doubles, Two triples and 10 home runs, along with 51 RBI. So big wow. production Absolutely. now being added. Two-two count now on Bingham. 
Michael Braswell, the third on deck for LSU. Ground ball in the hole. That'll make it into left field for the base hit for Mac Bingham. And the Tigers threatening again here with two on, two outs here in the third inning. And that's another deep count that has gone the Tigers' way, this one being the 2-2 pitch he's able to shoot through the left side of the infield. What we talked about in the second inning, you know, the deep counts, the walks, the hit-by-pitch, and the single that Jones had before the hit-by-pitch to Bingham. This one, through another deep count following a walk, it's a 2-2 base hit for Bingham to keep the inning alive. Michael Browswell, the third. At the plate now for LSU, starting shortstop for the Tigers. And that number nine hole tonight for Jay Johnson. We'll get into the coaches here in a little while during the broadcast. And spotlight Jose Cruz Jr. and Jay Johnson. A lot of pressure when you take over coming in, taking over an LSU program, trying to elevate it. What was already a very solid baseball program. And you have both programs with rich tradition. Obviously, LSU has been able to keep that winning tradition alive. Head coach Jose Cruz Jr. in his third season, mirroring Jay Johnson in the other dugout in his third season at the program, trying to get the Owls back there. Three and one now on Braswell. Activity in the Rice bullpen again. Melvin, third pitcher tonight for Jose Cruz, Jr. Here's the 3-1 to Braswell. Good swing on that one. Full count now, 3-2. Mauricio Rodriguez getting warm for the Owls. We talked about it going to be a potential Johnny Holstaff situation for both sides. <laughs> Three arms already for Rice in the third inning. Kate Anderson looking very good through two. That'll load him up. Another walk given up by Melvin. That's five walks so far in this ballgame. And that'll force a stroll by Jose Cruz. There's another look at right-hander Mauricio Rodriguez, the senior from Revere, Massachusetts. Yeah, I'll quickly run back through his numbers, making his second appearance on the season. Four innings are about 6.75 ERA. Four hits, three runs, all earned with five walks and two strikeouts. So it's been Fernandez, Shoshan, Melvin, and now Rodriguez. As he faces the top of the order, Paxson Kling for LSU with the bases loaded. And I got a piece of cling right there. Another hit by pitch by the Owls pitching staff. And the run crosses, 6 nothing lead now for LSU. We take one more look at this pitch home. This runs on the inside, looks like it just clips that elbow pad. And that's why you wear it, to protect yep. yourself. You're inside of the box, you don't have to move either. So he just takes the extra opportunity for the Tigers to add to their lead. Three hitters. Hit by pitch so far tonight by the Owls pitching staff. LSU is pulled away right now, six nothing on five hits tonight. The freshman Steven Milam had a single in his first at bat. He's one for two. Good off speed pitch. Well, I'm way ahead of that one. Flew out to right field in his last at bat. Milam well, hitting 409 on the year, at least entering tonight's contest with six RBIs. Slow roller right side. Got to hurry, but Milam. Beats it out there. Infield single. And the run comes in again for LSU. It's 7-0. Yeah, 
They've had some mental laps for Mauricio Rodriguez. Unfortunately, you see him shaking his head frustrated with himself. The ball obviously kind of in that middle no man's land. When you see West going for it, though, you're supposed to commit to going to the bag, and we'll see him start, stop, and start again. And by then, obviously, yeah. yeah, the quick feet of Milam up down the line. My drive center field by Tommy White. Two more come in for LSU. Nine-nothing lead for the Tigers. LSU has been averaging nine runs per game after averaging 8.9 a year ago. But they've had several games this season where they've had double-digit offensive outputs at 18 and one, had 27 in routes of Stony Brook and VMI in the early goings of this season. And now right there behind another base hit, already knocking on the door of double digits, up nine nothing with two outs in the top of the third. Tigers have hit around again in this third inning. That was White's second at bat of this frame. This is Josh Pearson. That one hangs up there. Brennan coming underneath that one, and that'll end a rough inning for the nine nothing lead for LSU. As we head to the bottom of the third inning here at Reckling Park, Tigers wrapping up a six one six run frame in the top of the third inning. Nine runs, seven hits for LSU. No runs, one hit for Rice. And one hit by Kite McDonald was an infield single back in the first inning. Yeah, a bunt single at that. Yep. Ready and coming. Leading it off here in the bottom of the third for Rice. In her tonight hitting 143 on the year. Just three for his first 21 at the plate. Kate Anderson, nice outing so far here at Reckling Park. Freshman left-hander. You got to feel pretty good, Kyle, when you're a freshman and you're getting this chance. This chopper there, and Anderson feels that cleanly over to first base to Jared Jones. And out number one here in the bottom of the third. You're a freshman. You're trying to break into this LSU club, and you got – Great defense right behind you, a veteran club. It's got to give you a little bit of confidence. Yeah, and especially right here, too, you know, fielding yourself. You had the bunt single, which is the only hit you've surrendered to this point. And then that one right there doing a great job of pouncing off the mound, getting it, knowing he's got time and taking the shirt underhand over to first. But, you know, to his credit, he's looked really good tonight as we see the square round pull back for a called strike. This is someone that they want to see, obviously have big things as they go forward. He threw 70 pitches last week, 50 or 40 of them for strikes. Right now we see him sitting at 30 pitches in the third inning, but already a 9 nothing lead. And so in looking at saving your arms for all the great baseball here in Houston ahead, Kate Anderson is someone that's showing he obviously has the ability and the stamina to go much deeper in tonight's game. Facing sophomore Ben Royo. Royo's first at bat. Great story with Royo. 13 home runs last year as a freshman. And I'm sure he uh, shared some laughs with his head coach, Jose Cruz Jr., over that. <laughs> yeah, obviously, anytime you can have the success he had in his freshman campaign, that's great, especially when you can match a coach's home run record by his you know, home runs as a freshman. And this is someone that has continued to work during his time here Coach Jose Cruz Jr. telling us he gained 20 pounds this offseason and looking for him to take another step here in his sophomore campaign in 2024. Yeah, he's listed at 173 as he gets the base hit, second hit of the game for Rice. Not a big guy, so you look at him, not a big frame, but he, this is an offseason where he added weight. Yeah, I mean, adding that 20 pounds might be the difference of yeah. that one right there, muscling a 3-2 pitch out into the shallow right center gap for their second hit. 
And for the Owls, obviously you're down 9 nothing, but the game has a long way to go. Yep. And so you can only focus on what's next, one pitch at a time, one at bat at a time, one half inning at a time, just trying to do what you can to help the guy in front of you or deliver. You do that, you can start to put some runs on the board, you can maybe scratch something across, you could potentially find yourself back in this, but you're not going to have a nine-run swing, so don't try to worry about it. Yeah, he's got to chip away, and Al's pitching staff has to lock in here against this Tigers lineup. Top of the order is Trayton Rank, the starting right fielder tonight. That one gets past the uh, catcher, Brady Neal, so Royo. Oh, it hit him, actually, so Royo advances to uh, second base. And Rank will head on down to first base. We'll see if the Anderson's going to stay out there. Now there's a little bit of activity on the other, looking on the other side of the tent there by the bullpen of LSU. Yeah, yeah, got him right on that left leg. Yep, and you saw he tried to give it again. Obviously, you're entitled to the box on half two. He backs up and ends up hitting right off that front left shin. Yep. And that's what draw the mound visit from Nate Yeski. Yeski's in his first season at LSU. He'll make the mound visits. Jay Johnson will still make the changes. But this is a guy that's no stranger to college baseball, having worked the past 18 years at four different schools, UNLV, Oregon, Arizona, and most recently Texas A&M prior to joining the Tigers in Baton Rouge. So the mound visit is done. Obviously just trying to tell Kate Anderson to lock back in. Yep. You got the lead, but we still need you to compete out there on the mound. Three strikeouts so far in this contest by Anderson. Not only two hits. And one walk so far. Well, Owls with their first threat of this game. With one out here. Runners on first and second. This is Kite McDonald. He had that bunt for a base hit in the first inning. Fly ball to right field. Actually, it drops right there, so runner advances to third. They'll get the force out at second base. And again, I don't know if wind was a factor at all or not, but we're seeing that quite a bit tonight. Yeah, we saw Pearson ranging in on as we take one more look. Watch as he did. It kind of goes right into the palm of the glove, and he just doesn't glove it all the way. Yep. But he does the next back thing. He picks it up. He gets it in quickly for them to still get an out to put runners on first and third. Like he's a little handcuffed there as that one came down. First and third now. Two outs for the Owls. Royo at uh, third base now for Rice. And McDonald, Kai McDonald on first base. A little an error there on Pearson in right field. Pierce Gallo at the plate now for Rice. RBI opportunity here as the Owls trail 9-0. Gallo off to a slow start to the season. And they're tonight hitting 160 on the year. Swing and a miss, so Anderson ahead in the count, 1-2 on you know, Pierce Gallo. He can get on board and keep it going. Nathan Becker is on deck for Rice. Here's the 1-2. Anderson thought he had that one right there. Yeah, you hear the Broxton cheer from the LSU fans here at Reckling Park. They thought he had it, too. Potentially a walk-off pitch. Instead, it evens the count at 2-2. Two two. It's not a bad spot, but just a little bit outside, so it's a good call. 2-2 on Gallo, ground ball, second base, picked by Milam, the freshman, misfires to first base. Royo comes in to score for Rice. Runners advance to second and third. And here's what we talk about, just focus on the next pitch. Do what you can. 
Thought it was a potential strike three situation as Kate Anderson at LSU. Instead, it's 2-2. And on the next pitch, Pierce Gallo, staying within himself, drives this ball deep on that right side of the infield. It's a good effort by Milam to pop up, but the throw cannot be corralled by Jones. And because of it, Owls are able to play to run and continue to threaten here with two on in scoring position with two outs. Runners on second and third now. Second error of the inning for LSU. Nathan Becker at the plate now, left-hander for the Rice Owls. He is the DH in there tonight, hitting 375. He struck out swinging in the second inning against Anderson. Out of baseball left. LSU doing damage with a three run second and a six run third inning. A little high, evens the count two and two. LSU, numbers there for Anderson so far. He popped up, shallow left field. That's going to drop right there, right past White. He looked around thinking Bingham May was going to call him off of that one, but it fell in between them. Yeah, it looked like a miscommunication there. White, you know, looked like he conceded to Bingham and maybe Bingham lost it in the lights or not quite sure or never said it. And there was something, you know, unsaid that they thought was said. So we take one more look at it. You see White at third going out there and he turns and he'll give way to Bingham turning and looking at him and Bingham watches it fall and the Owls are able to play two here as they get a crooked inning of their own to now cut it to a six run game at 9-3. Three across. Becker on first base with two outs. And this is where we talk about just doing what you can. Owls only have one base hit. Well, now two with the base hit off of Becker as that ball falls down for a single down the left field line. But just trying to do what you can, they get the rebound inning they were hoping for. A rebound inning in baseball is after surrendering a run. The next half inning, doing what you can to get back on the board. And the Owls do that. Garza struck out in his first at bat in that second inning. That was the frame where Anderson struck out three in the frame and allowed that one walk to Jack Rydell. One two to Garza. Jack Rydell on deck for the Owls. LSU venturing outside of Baton Rouge for the first time with this contest here at Rice, and they'll stay in town, as we mentioned, through the weekend. They've got an opener at Minute Maid Park here in Houston against Texas on Friday night, part of the Astros, Golf, or Astros Foundation baseball tournament. Shot down the right field line, just foul. Nearly extra bases there by Garza. Yeah, so they'll head to Minute Maid Park. LSU will face Texas on Friday night. And then Louisiana, Raging Cajuns on Saturday night. And it'll close out the weekend against Texas State Sunday afternoon. Next week at Southeastern in Hammond. We're returning home next weekend. Call strike three on Garza. And that'll wrap up the bottom of the third inning, but not before the Rice Owls answer back. Their first big inning of this contest. They push across three. A little help. A couple six runs in the third and 
Kyle, it was a nice bounce back bottom of the third inning for Rice to kind of chip away the deficit here. And that's what you want, you know, the opportunity to just continue to compete. And that's what Jose Cruz Jr. should be really proud about in that first base dugout. They had the six run, you know, top frame to fall behind nine runs. And they were able to take advantage of some miscues, obviously some walks and things in that nature. You know, the, the hit by pitch, I should say, from Cade Anderson to be able to play three of their own. So you're just a third through this game. There's a lot of baseball to go here tonight. Aiden Travinsky with his third at-bat of the contest. So far on the night, he is 0 for 1. Had a ground ball out in the second inning, and then he was hit by a pitch and scored in the third. Called strike three. And an opening strikeout for Mauricio Rodriguez. Mauricio came on to get the final out last inning, opening this up with that strikeout of Travinsky. Doing a good job as we take one more look at it. We talk about trying to keep momentum on your side. This is how you can do it. The off-speed pitch, a good job painting a corner to his batter, making guards behind the plate who maybe helped him with the call with the frame job, <laughs> but all the while still a good pitch on a good count for that pitcher to get the out. One out here in the fourth brings up Brady Neal. And if you missed it, oh, about 20 minutes ago or so in his last at-bat, Drilled a two-run home run deep into right center field. That was his second home run of the year. Eight RBIs now in the year for Neal. On deck will be Jared Jones for LSU. Here's the one-two. Man, a lot of movement on that one right there. And another strikeout for Mauricio Rodriguez. Yeah, he'll take a lap around the mound. Exactly what he wanted. We've seen him doing a really good job of mixing up his fastball and off-speed. This one right here, you see that off-speed starting low and inside, letting it fall with that late break off the table to draw a swing and miss for the second out. LSU first base, but Jared Jones at the plate now. Walked and scored in his last at-bat. Hitting seventh in the Tigers lineup for Jay Johnson tonight. Yeah, top to bottom, this LSU lineup. Really talented. Many of these guys coming back from that national title run last year. And we talk about, you know, all those opportunities, what it might look like for them. 21 returners from last year, but they also had, you know, all those new Tigers come on, ranking as high as number three in the recruiting ranking. So an all-caliber transfer class, obviously some yeah. new pieces as underclassmen too. Kate Anderson, of course, being one of them on the mound tonight. But a lot of excitement in Baton Rouge as they look to defend their 2023 national crown. Swung on, well struck center field. Right there for it is Kite McDonald. And a pretty quick inning there for Mauricio Rodriguez. One, two, three, and we are done in the top of the fourth inning. 9 3 lead. LSU leading. Ice University Owls with some work to do here, trailing LSU 9 to 3. Anderson, Kate Anderson, the freshman, remains out there, the starting pitcher for LSU. He enters his fourth inning of work here. Jack Rydell will start it off for the Rice Owls. Rydell walked and is only at bat tonight back in the second inning. Sandwiched around a couple of strikeouts. Actually, three strikeouts by Anderson. And there's another strikeout. That is number five by my count. Yep, number five in the ball game for the LSU lefty. Yeah, really working quick out there on the mound here in his fourth inning of work. And we talk about, you know, the opportunity for him looking to bounce back. He gave up three runs in the third. And now out there making quick work. We saw heavy doses of fastballs from Cade Anderson to get that first out and sitting down right out. The freshman Landon West getting the start at first base tonight for Rice, making his collegiate debut tonight. In his very first at bat, he struck out back on the second inning. Local product here in the Houston area. In Katy, Texas, about a half hour from the Rice campus.
So he's also got a brother on the team, Graydon West, haven't seen him, but comes from an athletic family. Father Greg played soccer at Tulsa from 92 to 96, and his grandfather also played golf for the Golden Hurricane. West goes down on strikes. So we talk about Kate Anderson and the filthy stuff he has. This has just been living with the fastball high in the zone. He's got a really good fastball, just gets on you quickly. The big frame from the left side and so far filling up the strike zone here in the fourth inning. Brendan coming. 0 for 1. Tap back to Anderson back in the third inning. Pops that one up to center field. Paxton Kling right there underneath that, and that is a quick inning for the lefty, Kate Anderson, and coming across for LSU in the second and third inning. If you're just tuning in, a three-run second for the Tigers. They followed that up with a six-run third inning before the Rice Owls answered back with three of their own in the third. Mauricio Rodriguez. Still out there for the Rice Owls tonight, facing Matt Mac Bingham to lead off the fifth inning. Bingham singled and scored back in the third inning. He's one for one tonight. He was hit by a pitch back in the second inning. It'll be Mac Bingham, Michael Braswell the third, and top of the order, Paxton Kling for LSU. Rodriguez looked really good that last inning. Three up, three down, with two strikeouts. You know, five, six, seven in that frame. Did a really good job of sitting them down. Now let's see if we can do it in his second full inning of relief work. Nice crowd on a chilly night here in Houston. As the day progressed, the wind picked up and the temperature dropped a little bit. He was hit by a pitch there, so Mac Bingham is going to head down to first base. As we take one more look at it, this is another free pass issue from the Rice out pitchers. This one you see Bingham with the check swing, and it comes around, and you're looking at that back right arm. Just gets a piece of the forearm to give him the free pass to open up the fifth inning. Al's pitchers have hit four Tiger hitters tonight. This is Michael Braswell the third. He is going to collect his first hit of the night right there. He walked in his first two at bats. So with that base hit, Bingham moves up to second base. Braswell the third on first. And the Tigers are threatening here in the top of the fifth inning. And Braswell's done a really good job in that nine hole. Two walks and now right here. A true single, just, you know, lining it out to right field. So all three times he has come up tonight, we have seen him be successful in turning that lineup over. Top of the order now for LSU, Kling. Well, Garza fires down. They misfire to second base, though. The throw hit him right in the back. You see right there, they're double checking if he is okay. So potential pick, you know, pickoff situations. We take one more look at Braswell standing on second. You can see the throw over. He's right there, and then the throw yeah, across. The yeah, yep. Torroyo goes right into him. Here's your best look for right here from our first base camera. Tries to get it over, just hits him right in the back, and he's up to second. Second and third now, no outs for LSU. Little check swing by Kling, and that one drops right there. Tigers get a break on that one with no outs here in the fifth inning. Kling had a two RBI single back in the second inning. Was hit by a pitch in the third inning after striking out the first. So he is one for two on the night for LSU as the cleanup or leadoff hitter for the center fielder for LSU. Here's the one two. Swung on. Popped up. Shallow right field. Rank right there. 
play at the plate. It's not going to be in time. Run will come in. Braswell advances to third. Mac Bingham comes in for LSU. And it's a 10-3 lead now for the Tigers. Some frustration for the Owls there on that throw home. The Sac Fly Unicorn does the job for the Tigers as they plate that run. But the frustration is right there on the relay throw home. There was an opportunity to throw over to third. And Landon West, as we talk about making his collegiate debut, he bluffed the throw at third. But if he had actually thrown to third, he could have gotten Braswell moving up for a second out. One out now, Braswell at third base for LSU. Brings up the freshman, Stephen Milam. Milam single to right field in his first at bat in the first inning. Flew out to right in the second and then had an infield hit in the third. Having a good night here in Houston. Liner to left field. That'll hang up there for coming. He'll fire in, but Braswell slides in safely for LSU. Tigers extend their lead to 11-3. So hit by pitch, a sack fly. It's ruled a double steal as that throw hit off Braswell's back earlier, put two in scoring position, then back-to-back -back sack flies bring both them home to make it 11-3 as we see coming come up into his throw. There's the relay throw, but not in time as they played their second run in the inning to go back up by eight. This is Tommy White. Had a single, two RBI at his last at bat. He actually hit twice when they played it six in the third inning. That last at bat for him was a two RBI single. Also in a double play and flew out, so he is one for three tonight. White had six RBI in the Tigers four games last week. Also had that first home run of the season. Coming off a fantastic year. Once again, 2024 Golden Spikes Award watch list. Last year, just phenomenal numbers by White. Hit 374 with 24 homers, 105 RBIs. That was number one in the nation in the RBI category. This is a guy that does it all. He's the top third baseman coming back this season. You mentioned all the preseason accolades. But he's also a member of the Lou Gehrig Community Impact Team for what he's able to do off the field. Donates some of his NIL earnings to local organizations. Participates in community outreach events all over Baton Rouge. This is a guy that fans really love. Well, that one froze him. And White goes down on strikes from Mauricio Rodriguez. But two more come. job of sticking with it the entire way. And Jones, you know, the athlete he is over there at first base as we see him come back in and get reset. Did a great job of sticking with it and tracking it all the way. And then, as you mentioned, you know, just kind of falling back into the failed territory as he made that catch for the first out. Trayton Rank at the plate now for the Rice Owls. The leadoff hitter for Rice. Rank getting a start tonight in right field. to the Rice program via Florida State. They tried to see if he could do the quick bunt. Well, you got Tommy White playing pretty deep there at third base. Not a bad idea there. And he's about to step in more than he was. He was almost all the way on the back of the infield over there at third. Here's the 0-2 to rank. A little high. Kite McDonald on deck for the Owls. Three runs, three hits tonight for Rice. Trying to get their offense a little more consistent here earlier in the season. Call third strike. And that is seven strikeouts now, I believe, for 
Kate Anderson. Yep, strikeout number seven to open his third time through a lineup. And you see just freezing him and Rank knew it the second it crossed the plate. He looks at it and goes, yep, and started the walk back to the first base dugout for the second out. Two quick outs with Royo and Rank up to Kite McDonald. Get something going here for the Owls here in the fifth inning. We mentioned earlier, a lot of purple in the crowd tonight. LSU faithful. Of, they're actually here early. Like 90 minutes for a first pitch. A lot of LSU fans made their way in here. A lot of Rice fans here as well to support the Owls. And obviously, you know, great tailgate atmosphere and ballpark at the box in Baton Rouge. I saw several in the parking lot here at Reckling on my way in. Fly ball right field, and that'll do it. Quick work for Cade Anderson here in the fifth inning. One, two, three. Through five here at Recklick Park in Houston, LSU on top 11-3. Making his second appearance first out of the bullpen. He did have two innings in a start. Now we look over at first base. Some changes. Trayton Rank comes in from right field. I think I noticed Brendan Cumming went from left to right. Let's see who's in left field now. That's Max Johnson taking over in left field, and then, yep, coming, moving over to right field. So your line on Mayo, we talked about that start, two innings to his name, no decision, no ERA, five walks and two strikeouts. Top of the sixth inning, so it's Mayo. Going to work, and first up out of the box for LSU is Josh Pearson. Pearson walked in his first at-bat back in the second inning. And then in two at-bats in that six-run third, he popped out to the third baseman and flew out to left. He is 0 for 2 tonight. Hayden Tavinsky. is on deck for LSU. Here's the 0-2. Call third strike. Jackson Mayo picks up the strikeout, facing his first Tigers hitter. A yeah, really good job as we take one more look at this. It's kind of a sweeping pitch across the zone, and you see it draws the take from Pearson as he looks at it for strike three. Four strikeouts tonight for Al's pitching. Check that five now tonight for Rice. Hayden Travinsky now at the plate for LSU. Struck out looking in his last at bat. Was hit by a pitch back in the third and then a ground ball out, so he's 0 for 2 tonight. Brady Neal on deck for LSU. He had that big two-run home run in the third inning for the Tigers. Got that six-run frame underway for LSU. So Mayo, the fifth pitcher we have seen tonight, first from the left side for the Owls. And you talked about, obviously, the Houston native. He prepped at nearby Memorial High School. His teammate of Al's Ben Dukes, Jack Rydell, Matthew Rahim, and Tom Vincent. Yeah, a lot of talent there at Memorial High School for a number of years now. Travinsky takes ball four, so he heads down to first base. 
with one out here in the sixth inning. This is the sixth walk issued by Al's pitchers tonight. Here's Brady Neal, as I mentioned. Had that big two-run home run to right center field in the third inning. Last at bat, struck out swinging. He also walked back in the second. Neal hitting 294 on the year. A couple of home runs, six RBI. So LSU uh, began the season all at home. So this is our first road trip. They just wrapped up a couple games against Stony Brook in Northern Illinois. This past weekend, both those programs came to town. Before that, Central Arkansas at VMI. Now here in Houston for the next few days. Royo. They get the force out at second base again. Felt like he was underneath that one, and the wind carried it a little bit deeper into left field. And you just saw him look up towards the sky, obviously. You can see the wind pushing his jersey across as he walks back in from shallow left field. As we take one more look at it, it's skied out towards left field. And we see, obviously, Johnson coming in. Royo was ranging back there. He doesn't field it, but he does a great job of sticking with the play to field it on that hop and then kick the ball back into second to get the force out. So two outs now in the sixth inning. This is Jared Jones at the plate for LSU. Jones lined out. Hard shot to center field his last at bat. He keep the inning alive. Mac Bingham is on deck for the Tigers. 11 3 lead for LSU. The 2 0 in there for a called strike. Jackson Mayo, the fifth pitcher tonight for Rice. That's a big hack right there at 2-1. 2-2, just outside. Full count now on Jared Jones. Jones will head down to first base. Seventh walk allowed now by Rice pitching. And it's going to bring up Mac Bingham now with runners on first and second with two outs here in the sixth inning. Yeah, they've had traffic on the base pass all night. Both these teams have. LSU has stranded four, but they've played at 11. Rice has stranded two and only have three across to their name. Mac Bingham hit by a pitch back in the second inning, wound up scoring. And a single to left in the third, also scored in that frame. He scored in the second, third, and fifth innings. He's been hit twice tonight. Senior transfer out of San Diego. Torrey Pines High School began his career there at Arizona. It's a good defensive swing for him right there to spoil that pitch. He got caught up out in front, but able to keep the bat through the zone just enough to find a piece of it. Owen 
two count now. Chopper fielded by third base by Rydell over to first base to get the out, and that'll do it here in the top of the six. The collegiate level. Well, Kate Anderson, terrific job getting the start tonight for LSU. Five innings, three hits, three runs, but no earned runs. Struck out seven tonight. I'm not sure what his total pitch count was, but he was pretty efficient tonight. Good job on the left-hander. Yeah, stat broadcast shows him at 82 pitches, 54 for strikes. So really good job with the pitch count. He was 70 pitches, 50 for, 40 for strikes against Central Arkansas. Very good job of being efficient in the zone today and keeping Rice off balance as he now hands the ball over to the pin. Pierce Gallo leads it off for Rice. Gallo facing Primo. Gallo hit into a double play back in the first inning, reached on an error in the third. Off speed, swing and a miss there by Gallo. It'll be Gallo, Nathan Becker, and Manny Garza. One, two, three here in the sixth inning for Rice. Round ball shortstop. Browsewell fires over. Jared Jones out number one here in the sixth. Take a look at it again. Slow yeah. roller, Browswell right there. You see the range right there, knowing yeah. he's got time, still working it towards that middle of the infield and going back towards center, he's able to glove it and make that strong throw over for the final out. I just uh, now see attendance here at Reckling Park tonight. 4,610 on hand to watch Rice and LSU. I knew we were going to expect a good crowd, yep. and they showed up tonight, braved the cold weather and the wind, bundled up a little bit here at Reckling Park, but obviously good baseball here in the corner of South Main. Well, home or away, LSU is a pretty good draw, and they're used to the big crowds at their home stadium, Alex Box Stadium in Baton Rouge. Quite the atmosphere at the box when you go to an LSU Tiger home game, huh? Yeah, it's definitely one of those places. It's a premier baseball destination, not just in the SEC, but in college baseball. Nathan Becker. Struck out swinging in the second, uh, singled in the third inning. One of the three hits from the Owls offense here tonight. Yeah, I imagine there'll be pretty good crowds this weekend as well with Stanford in town. It'll be here Friday night, late afternoon on Saturday. Sharply hit ball into right field off the glove of Jared Jones. That trickles into right field. Well struck there by Nathan Becker, his second hit of the night. And that's just a good job by Becker of protecting, you know, the payoff pitch knows it's coming. We see a fastball in the inner half of the plate, and he turns on it. It's a great effort by Jones leaving his feet, trying to knock it down, but that ball comes off the bat so hard, ricochets off and goes out into right field. Brings up Manny Garza. Couple of strikeouts tonight for Garza. Garza entered tonight, hitting 320 through the right out for seven games. Has one home run, eight RBI on the year.
Jack Rydell on deck for the Rice Owls. Three and one count now on Garza. With one out here in the sixth inning. Owls with some work to do down eight runs right now, 11-3. Ground ball, that's going to get in there to right field. Back-to-back -back hits for the Rice Owls. And they got something going here in the sixth. And it's been their patience that has led them to this point here in this inning. The fall of that ground out by Gallo it was that 3-2 three three pitch to Becker. He shoots through the right side of the infield, and now 3-1 to Garza. Him getting an outside pitch and just taking it that way also through the 34 hole on that side of the mound, or that side of the field, I should say, to put two on with one out. Jack Rydell at the plate now for Rice. Runner in scoring position here with one out. Rydell walked back in the second inning. Struck out swinging in the fourth. Swing and a miss. 0-2 hole now. This has been good for Primo to get back after falling behind and losing both their last two hitters, the Owls have sent the plate. Coming at him 0-2, attacking the zone. Rydell has homered in each of his last three home games, so showing some power here at Reckley Park. That one shoots through into left field as well. Three consecutive hits, and that's going to bring in a run here as Nathan Becker crosses for the Owls, and it's an 11-4 lead now for LSU. And that's a great job of Rydell protecting down two strikes. Find something he can drive and just puts it through that left side of the infield. Braswell was shaded behind second and because of that shift that ball is able to find enough real estate to get through on the left side of the infield and that's how Nathan Becker comes home from second. Three in the third innings. Three hits. No runs across with no walks and five strikeouts. This is a guy that's been a career bullpen arm for the Tigers. Made 40 total appearances and 11 starts across his Tiger career. The career 5.78 ERA as he takes over. Last season pitched in 19 games as a reliever, posting a no decision. 7.97 ERA in 20 in the third innings. Pitching 18 games with 11 starts in 2022. So Dutton facing Max Johnson now. Max Johnson checked into the game. Well, they made a couple of changes in the last inning for the Owls. Ground ball, great play at second base by Milam over to Jared Jones. Man, Milam saved a couple of runs from scoring right there. Yeah, Owls thought they were going to have another crooked inning, and they still might, but it's going to have to wait at least one more at bat behind the defensive effort by Milam on that ball deep on the right side of the infield. He does a great job of laying out to get it and then popping up to make a quick throw over to Jones for the second out, but there are two in scoring position. It's going to be a quick mound visit. Looks like this is to talk strategy in a certain situation based on how quick the, the call and Nate Yeski. Brendan coming now at the plate for Rice. With two outs now, runners on second and third for the Owls. Trail by seven. First pitch to coming. Ball one now. Say what, a two RBI single. We make it an 11 6 lead for LSU, and Owls have to be feeling good about things. Swung on. 
pretty well struck, but that's going to hang up there in center field. Paxton Kling underneath that one, and that'll do it. So the Owls leave two on. They get one across, still trail by seven. It's 11-4, LSU. Jackson Mayo out there again for the Owls. Leads it off here in the seventh against Michael Braswell the third. Braswell's been very productive in that secondary leadoff position. Two walks and a, and a base hit in turning that lineup over. This is the first time he's led off an inning, though, however. And a base hit to right field wound up scoring in the fifth inning. Enter tonight, the junior hitting 238. Double, triple, home run, and eight RBIs early in this season. Lefty Mayo against Braswell. Call third strike. And Braswell goes down on strikes for the first time tonight. Jackson Mayo doing a good job of picking up where he left off the last inning, where he picked up a strikeout, opening up this one with a strikeout as well. See that low inside. Draws the call third strike for the backwards K, his second looking. Sixth strikeout on the night by the Owls pitching staff. Mayo is the fifth pitcher used tonight for Jose Cruz Jr. Top of the order now up. Paxton Kling, one for two with a single. Also struck out early in the contest, first inning. He'll be followed by the freshman, Stephen Milam. Wind has been a factor if you're just tuning in all night long here at Reckling Park. A lot of the infielders and outfielders have had some issues throughout the contest tonight. That wind really got, got going about, uh, I, know, I started noticing kind of mid-afternoon when that front came through. and They thought there could be some gusts 20 to 25 today. Yeah, we've seen those flags whipping out left field all game. Eighth walk of the night by the Owls pitching staff. So Kling on first base with one out brings up the freshman Stephen Milam. Two for three tonight. Also had a really nice defensive stop back in the fifth inning. Yeah, that helped cap what could have been a big inning for the Owls. Keep you to just one run home. Yeah, I said fifth, actually sixth inning. Last inning, really in the hole, dove and make a nice stop. Playing on the run. He is safe at second base after the attempt from Manny Garza. That's his third. That was a tough one, though. That ball was way outside. He was able to get it down there. Yeah, that's his third stolen base of the season, and that worked out well in his favor as that pitch was off base. And so they'll be able to take advantage of move up. But we are going to have a challenge here. Rice wanting to take a look and take one more look. They want to see if they got him. And obviously with a situation like this, you got two to use. They're going to go ahead and use one here in the top of the seventh. So they'll go into that replay booth, which is located just up the first base line. See Paxton Clean, he's going to jog back to his dugout, get a quick shot of water as we take one more look here from our high home cam. You're looking at that tag from Gallo as it comes home or comes to the bag, and you see right there that left hand, but it's, it's on, but yeah, does he come exactly. off? Hey, he obviously. Yeah, that's going to be a really tight, tough call there. 
It looked like that left hand right there. Good job by the camera crew here. Take nice. a look at it again. He's going in here on the – gets that left hand, initially makes the contact with the back. And they're going to need indisputable evidence to turn it over. The call on the field was safe, so we see right there the hand made contact, but looking at it, does it come off? And obviously the tag from Gallo on the back side as he comes through, does he maintain contact – with that hand before making the transfer to his foot. Look there, when you see his left hand, it looks like it's not making contact with the bag. Yeah, that, this one may be overturned here. Al's obviously thought they had an opportunity, and of course, listening to Gallo, who says, I got him, I know I got him. So you're gonna take the word of your defensive player out there in the field. He's the one obviously applying the tag, and you can see right there, he stayed with it the whole way. And you can see the hand obviously was with him, and he was quick to show that he had the ball in the glove. So Gallo talking the Owls into taking a look. And we'll, we'll wait to hear as they're, they're getting ready to come back out. Here they come. That runner is ruled safe at second base. Video look like they may have got him, but Kling will remain at second base with one out here. And it, it's got to be indisputable evidence for them to make that overturn. So earlier tonight, we announced the crowd 4,610 in the town. Just been handed a note that says tonight's crowd is the largest Home crowd at Reckling Park since 5,478 saw Rice defeat number three, Texas A&M 4-3 to three back on April 5th, 2016. It was a win over number three A&M tonight hosting number two LSU. Yeah, good turnout. Weather held nicely despite that front coming in. The cool weather didn't keep them away tonight. And let's just talk about the faithful, obviously. Al's here to support their home field of an LSU showing out in numbers here in H-Town. Swing and a miss by Milam. That is out number two, the strikeout there from Jackson Mayo. And we take one more look at, look at the job of Garza behind the plate to squeeze it, and yeah, you see immediately the foul tip into the glove, but he pops it up and shows Joe Harris, the home plate umpire, says, I caught it, and that's how it, you get the second out. Here's Tommy White now with an RBI opportunity. Always dangerous. Showed that last year with 105. Led the nation in RBIs last season with 105. Just a phenomenal year, top to bottom for Tommy White. So obviously it's a foul ball, but the effort right here from Rydell, this throw across the diamond on the run, a bright spot for the Owls defensively here in 2024 as we await for White to walk back to first or from first. White's one for four tonight. Struck out looking back in the fifth inning. Had that two RBI single in the third. Part of a six-run frame for LSU. There's Mayo to White. That one's fouled off right side. Yeah, two pitches, two swings, one down either foul line. Now be forced to protect with an 0-2 count. Kind of a check swing, really, from White, but that stays in, but that's lost in the wind again by Rankin right field. Felt like he was under it. That's going to be a ground rule double. That's how they're going to rule that one. Again, Rank would love to have that one back, Kyle, because he was underneath it. Yeah, watch this. This ball is flaring out down that right field corner. You see him running. It almost looks like, yeah, you see overruns the route, it skips off the turf, and then, you know, the hop off the turf, it goes up and over the right field wall for the ground rule double. And they're also going to go ahead and lift White here for a pinch runner. So on that play, Paxton Kling scores. 
Ben Nippolt's going to come in. So Nippolt in for LSU with two outs. The amazing thing on that swing, though, it wasn't even a full swing, and that almost left the yard. <laughs> no, and that shows <laughs> you the strong he is. Yeah, that shows you the strength of White right there to be able to muscle that out there. Yeah. Obviously, when you know wreaking some havoc for coming as he was trying to track it down, but still just to be able to put it all the way out there for that ground rule double, LSU able to go back up by eight because of it. Cleanup hitter Josh Pearson at the plate now for LSU. Hitting 217 so far tonight. Walk back in the second inning. Couple fly outs and a strikeout, so he's 0 for 3. <laughs> Aiden Travitsky on deck for LSU. Inside, nearly got a piece of Pearson. Now playing Pearson to pull the ball. And inside, he'll take the walk. So first and second now with two outs. Walk number nine tonight for the Owls pitching staff. You know, the walks and the hit by pitch, obviously something here in the third week of the season. Owls will look to clean up as 2024 progresses. And you look at that all those times, many of these walks have come home. Two walks and hit by pitch scored in the second. A hit by pitch, three and two walks scored as part of that big third inning. A hit by pitch also scored in the fifth. And so far we've seen a walk score in the seventh. Here's Travitsky. Walked his last at bat, struck out looking, was hit by a pitch back in the third inning. Grounded out back in the second. Sharply hit ball through the hole into left center field. That'll bring in a run. And it's a 13-4 lead for the Tigers on the RBI single from Hayden Travitsky. It's an 0-1 pitch, just finding something he can drive. And obviously he's seeing the ball very well tonight. And we've seen him put the ball in play for the first time off the new pitcher, off Jackson Mile. He's able to... Tune this ball up nicely for the single, but brings home another. So when they have scored, they've scored in bunches. Three in the second, six in the third, two more. Beg your pardon, in the fifth, and then two uh, now two here in the seventh. Brady Neal. He had the big blast to right center field back in the third inning. Just crushed it. Also singled in the sixth inning, so nice evening at the plate for Brady Neal. Two outs here, top of the seventh in Houston. Runners on the corners for LSU here. Another pitcher up in the Rice bullpen. But for now, belongs to Jackson Mayo. Mayo, the fifth pitcher used for Rice tonight here against LSU. It's 2 1. Swung on. Fly ball. Deep right field. See you later. Another home run by Brady Neal, his second of the night. That one probably even a bigger blast than his one earlier. He had three home runs all of last season in 26 games. He now has his third, second of the night, but third on the season through the first eight games here in 2024. 
So glad to have him healthy for the Tigers and obviously doing things behind the plate defensively, but also just like this with his second long ball of the bat hitting off the scoreboard in right center. Both his home runs have been shots here to St. Thomas Aquinas High School. Sharply hit, shortstop. Royo over there to first base. And one pitch, they get out of the inning, but not before serious damage delivered by LSU. A five run, pretty good amount still hanging out here. Yeah, breathing and braving it all, and also, you know, staying through to the end as we go to the home half of the seventh, following the seventh inning stretch. Samuel Dutton still out there for LSU. He was the brought in last inning, third pitcher used for LSU. Ben Royo at the plate will lead it off for the Owls. He singled and scored back in the third inning. And then popped up to the first baseman, Jared Jones, in the in the fifth inning. He is one for two on the night. Number nine hitter in the South lineup tonight. Obviously a lot of tough competition the Owls have faced in the early goings of 2024. Home series against Notre Dame. Also welcome Sam Houston in the midweek. Series at Louisiana last week as Royo goes down swinging. Then LSU and Stanford here to open up this five-game homestand before they welcome Prairie View next Tuesday. And Coach Jose Cruz Jr. asking about the tough scheduling, and he says it's great. It's what I want. It's able for us to test us right out of the gate, but yep. also help them know where they are and where they stand as they go into their first season as a member of the American Athletic Conference. Yeah, big changes this year with the shift to the American and – Always a tough league, just like Conference USA was as well for Rice. Top of the order, Trayton Rank now at the plate for the Rice Owls. Struck out looking back in the fifth. Was hit by a pitch in the third, ground ball out in the first. He is 0 for 2 tonight. And a base hit to right field for Trayton Rank. And that is the seventh hit tonight for Rice. The one out runner on for the Owls brings up Kite McDonald. Got an infield hit in the first inning. Reached on an error in the third, flew out in the fifth inning. Donald hitting 241 this year, three home runs, or two home runs, three RBIs on the year. Of course, college season off and running. Most of these teams have played just under 10 games so far, so very early. And yeah, before you know it, the. Uh, Big leaguers will get to work. Spring training already going. They go about a month from now. Yeah, spring training underway already. You know, great time for baseball fans as we've turned the corner from football and Super Bowl. Obviously, you know, this is that crossover season. We have a lot of sports at college, you know, college athletics underway. The college basketball season, of course, is admitted, you know, full force right now. Rice hosting Temple just across the parking lot from us earlier this evening. Yeah, a lot of uh, – Congestion in the parking lots tonight on campus. Between this one here at Reckling Park and then, as you just mentioned, basketball game at Tudor Fieldhouse. They're doing a cool promotion this weekend here at Rice. Called third strike. McDonald down on strikes and out number two here in the seventh inning. So Stanford is in town. They'll play. A, take a look at this play first. There's the last pitch. Yeah, you see him just freeze him over that outside corner. He looks at it. You see the grimace, of course, frustration as he walks back to that first base dugout. Pierce Gallo now at the place 
uh, plate for the Rice Owls. So Stanford's coming here Saturday night, 6.30 first pitch for the opener of that series. And then uh, Rice is doing uh, something pretty cool, make a day of it here at Rice on campus. you got a women's basketball game at 2 o'clock Saturday. And you attend that, you can come over here and watch the 4.30 game against Stanford. Yeah, make a day of it here at Rice. It was just show your tickets to get in. Yep. And then be able to come over as we look at the line on Dutton tonight, inning and a third with a hit, two strikeouts to his name. Been a night of big innings for the LSU Tigers. Call strike on Gallo. Evens the count 2-2. Two, two. I'm sorry, 1-2 and two now. Three runs second. Six run third. Two in the fifth. Five in the seventh for Rice. Sharply hit ball. Off the glove of the first baseman. Back over to Milam who fires to get the out. Wow. Couldn't have hit that one any harder, but that'll do it for Rice in the seventh inning. Take a look at it one more time. Things are going the Tigers' way tonight here at Reckling Park in Houston. We head to the eighth. It is 16-4, Tigers. Weatherford College now landing at Rice, play for the Owls. First up for Rayum here in the eighth inning. See if there's another pinch hitter now for the uh, Tigers. Zeb Ruddle at the plate for LSU. Eighth inning, all LSU as they come to Houston for a busy several day stretch. Swung on, well hit, but foul into the Rice Owls bullpen. LSU will have tomorrow off, as will Rice for both teams. Resume action on Friday. Rice will be right here at Reckling Park against Stanford, while LSU will begin play in the Minute Maid Park Classic this weekend through their Astros Foundation. It's a great field in that tournament, by the way. You've got they're going to play Texas Friday night. In Texas, Louisiana Lafayette, and Texas State are who they'll face. But also in the field, you have teams like Vanderbilt, the University of Houston's right. playing in that tournament as well. Always a good tournament there at Minute Maid Park. Ruddle picks up the, or Ruddle goes down on strikes to open things up here in the eighth inning. So one more look on the Rayum. pitch home from Ray Yoom. Good job, you know, that arm side run on the outside corner and draws that swing and miss. That is strikeout number eight on the night for Rice House pitching. Ryan Kucherak at the plate now for LSU. His first at bat tonight. He's hitting 333 on the year. Track pinch hitting for the shortstop, Michael Braswell, the third. Braswell had a good night at the plate. Kucherak's a freshman out of Chandler, Arizona, into this LSU program. So Rice with three against Stanford. Hopefully gets Prairie View next week. And then four in Honolulu where they take on Hawaii on a nice little getaway there to Honolulu, play some baseball. They'll actually work, get a workout day in and then four games against Hawaii. 
And then they come back, you know, Crosstown, HCU, Lance Berkman, another Al, is the skipper of the program here in Houston. Then they get to play the University of Houston in a Tuesday-Wednesday matchup, and then it's on to conference play from there. Kucherak takes the walk there. That one got away from Rayu. Hey, he just did a good job. Watch the bat head. He's able to, he, when he knows he's going down, he drops the bat head down. Tenth walk of the night for the Rice pitching staff. More activity in the Owls bullpen. Wentz calming down a little bit now. Not as strong, at least it appears right now, that it was for most of the game. But still a factor tonight. Top of the order, this is Paxson Kling. Hitting 4.09 entering tonight. He had a two RBI single back in the second inning. Part of that three run frame for LSU. Thought for a second they got a piece of Kling. Obviously, it did not. Got past. It certainly sounded like it made a noise. Yeah, may, so maybe it hit his bat here. And Let's we take, take a look at it. Looks like it just it's just the stab of yeah, the glove for right. Garza that made the sound. Two one count on Kling. Runner advanced on that. So Kucherak at second base now with one out. Stephen Milam, the freshman. Coming up now for LSU. I watched that lead arm with that pad. He's a good job of turning to protect himself, but it's going to glance right off of just above it, actually, on the jersey of his left arm. How many is that now they've hit? I'm trying to count real quickly on my scorecard. One, two, three. Four or five times this year, or tonight? I have that as being the fifth, but yeah. it's too many. Yeah, you've got ten walks. You've hit five hitters. Yeah, not a great night for the pitching staff. And they will make a change here in the eighth inning. The night's done for Matthew Rayum. And it'll have a new pitcher coming in for the Rice Owls. 16 to 4. LSU here. LSU here at Reckling Park in Houston. We'll be right back. Blank is going to be asked to blank the Tigers here in this frame. <laughs> They'd like to keep this at the eight run deficit to go on to the bottom of the ninth. One out here in the eighth inning. Runners on first and second for LSU. Blank facing the freshman, Stephen Milam. Milam with a couple of hits tonight in the first and third innings. Flew out, had a sacrifice fly in his last at bat. Struck out swinging. So Blank was MVP of the 2023 5A Texas State Baseball Championship game when Magnolia West won its first state title in any sport with a 3-2 win over Argyle. Prone to the big stage. Ground ball, shortstop. Royo touches second base. Not in time over to first. They get the force out for out number two. I see what Royo was trying to do there, take his momentum for the 6-3 double play, but he was probably two or three steps too far for that. As he's talking it over with Gallo at second base right now. Just those extra steps. Obviously, you got the force out at second, but watch these extra steps it takes for him to get over. That is what allows Milam to get down the line to be safe on the fielder's choice.
Ben DePolt at the plate now for LSU, hitting 200 on the year. Limited at bat so far in these first eight games for LSU. Two outs here in the eighth inning. Bolt out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Jake Brown and another true freshman on deck right now to pinch hit for LSU. Two-two count now with two outs. Runners on the corners now for LSU. Pulp with a chance to add to the 16-4 lead for LSU. Got a piece of that one. It's going to stay in bounds. Nice play there by the catcher for Rice. For the out at first base, and that'll do it in the eighth inning. So the Tigers lead two on, but they are. Be part of the college classic over there. The Houston Astros do a great job hosting that event through their foundation. And good looking schedule there. A date with the Texas Longhorns Friday night. And I'm told they're expecting a really nice crowd. 20,000 plus expected for that one Friday night. Then they've got the Raging Cajun Saturday, Texas State on Sunday. Yeah, then they close out this five game road swing with a visit to Hammond at Southeastern Louisiana. And then you look Arkansas coming up towards the end of March. Nick Bronzini, number 14, toes the rubber now for the Tigers here as we go to the home half of the eighth, making his second appearance on the season, just a third of an inning with a strikeout to his name as he comes on. Big frame, 6'3", 256 pounds. A lot of lineup changes last few innings for both teams, getting some playing time. Especially a lot of these young players for both LSU and Rice. Including a pinch hitter right here. Trey Duffield will pinch off to lead things off. Houston area product from straight Jesuit High School. Another good power program in the greater Houston area. Manny Garza, the catcher, is on deck. So Duffield. That's hitting for Nathan Becker. There's a one two to Duffield. Still some action in the Rice bullpen. We'll see if there's any changes coming up in the ninth inning. Yeah, potentially may see one more Al. <coughs> Would be their ninth pitcher. Here's a 3-2 Duffield. Swung on, foul ball right side. Over the stands and past the roost here right at the Reckling Park. So as Bronzini battles his first batter, your final line on Dutton, an inning in two thirds with a hit and two strikeouts across 21 pitches. Low ball four, so Duffield heads down to first base. Brings up catcher Manny Garza now for Rice. Single to right in his last at bat in the sixth inning. Prior to that, a couple of strikeouts in the second and third inning. 
Take 321 to start this new season. Garza Jr. out of Rio Grande City. Another Texas product. You look up and down this Rice roster, a lot from the state of Texas, many from the greater Houston area, but it's been the case for a long time. It's just so much talent in Houston. You don't have to go far to find players. No, and it's it's part of what they've been able to reinstill. You know, Coach Cruz in his third season, he's believes you know helped make them reattract to the Houston area is their ability to develop players. Slow roller, second base. They got to hurry over to get Garza, and that was close, but they get the out at first base. Great play there by Ryan Kucherak, who hustled in and had to flip it quickly over to first base. Ashton Larson. Yeah. Manny Garza is a catcher, but he gets down the line quick as we see this hard chopper kind of in the no man's land between the pitcher and second base. So Kucherak does a good job of coming up, charging him that throw on the run over to Larson to get the first out. But back to, you know, you know Houston recruiting. Rice is obviously a great institution academically. But for Coach Cruz talking about, you know, the athletes he has tried to establish as – we having a replay review here on yeah, this? Yeah, I think we are. They're going to take a look at it. That was that last replay we just showed. I don't know if we can take a look at that again and slow it up a little bit more. That was pretty close. Yeah, you see that that foot, and you see obviously yeah. Manny Garza thought he got there in time. We take one more look. You see the extension. Great camera work getting this shot. That right hey, foot. Not in the glove yet. Not in the glove yet. Yeah, it looks like he's, he's going to be safe. He's safe. Yeah. That you, so, obviously, you get, take a look at that one. you get two challenges, and so they challenged earlier that call was stayed. This one does look like there's a very good chance it's going to be overturned. But on the Houston – on the Rice recruiting efforts in Houston, Cruz said this past signing class was the biggest that he could recall, and he was excited about the class they have coming in next year. He says like he likes fast arms and fast players, and that's what they've been recruiting. They are the fastest they have been since he took over, and he said next year they're only going to be faster. And that, and talking about the fastness of his team, the fast effort of Manny Garza to get down the first base line. Yeah, nice hustle. Garza crossed. He, he gave the safe signal. He felt he was safe. And they do come out and officially signal he's safe, so this call is going to be overturned. It's going to be an infield single for Manny Garza, and he will be immediately lifted for a pinch runner. He'll take that hit. Absolutely. Coming on to run for him is Jacob Davini. Pitch hitting now is Tobias Motley. Freshman from Cy Ranch High School here in the Houston area. Outs here in the eighth inning. A couple of runners on for Rice. That one in there called strike. Saw Motley a little bit during pregame over at third base. Good glove and strong arm. He's got a bright future here, I think. Coming from a solid program there in the Northwest part of Houston, the Cy Fair ISD District, Cy Ranch, long-time power program here in the Houston area. And keeping recruits home is a big point of contention for Jose Cruz and a focus of theirs. Of course, he is someone that gave Todd Graham immediate credibility when he, as a local standout, chose to stay at Rice. Finally down on strikes, out number one here in the eighth inning. One more look at the pitch to Motley, and you see 
Good job of just changing his eyes, drawing that swing and miss for the first down. Mac Johnson with his second at-bat in the game. He came in for Landon West at first base. His last at-bat had a ground ball out to second base. RBI opportunity here. Runners on first and second with one out for Rice. Swung on. Well struck. We'll see if that carries. It's going to hold up in the ballpark. The catch is made out number two. And Duffield tags and advances to third. So runners on the corners with two outs for Rice. And that was Ruddle out there in left field doing a good job of adjusting as we saw him make the shoulder turn to adjust his route to go over and catch that ball for the out. This is Eric Correa at the plate now for Rice, freshman from Puerto Rico through Montverde Academy. He's pinch hitting for Brennan Cumming. Looking through the game notes, next year, uh, Rice is already a part of a big tournament, early tournament in Puerto Rico. So they're getting into the uh, college baseball game there as well. Called third strike on Correa. And that is out number three here in the eighth inning. I'll leave a couple on. 16 to four, LSU. Four, five, and six, Jake Brown, Hayden Travinsky, and Brady Neal are due up here for the Tigers. It's their final three offensive outs in the first of four games here in the city of Houston. Stan starting to empty out a little bit. A few of the faithful still here to brave the cool weather. 55 degrees right now. Felt a little cooler with that wind whipping around all day. Started off here in the ninth inning. Jake Brown at the plate, freshman out of Sulphur, Louisiana. Brown hitting 368 early in this year. This season for LSU. LSU off tomorrow, but they'll be at Minute Maid Park with all the other teams taking part in the Minute Maid Park Classic for each of them gets about an hour of a workout time. Swung on, fly ball right field, that'll stay in. And out number one here in the ninth inning. It's a good job of DeGlant to come on and just fill up the strike zone. Obviously, it was given a ride out to that right center gap. But Correa does a good job of getting under it to glove it for the first out. Ethan Fry. At the plate now for LSU. Sophomore for the Tigers. First pitch in there, called strike.
Seven pitchers by my count used tonight by Rice. Yeah, a lot of arms thrown tonight. Obviously, a lot of defensive changes of both sides have emptied their bench with defensive substitutions. Behind the plate catching that is now Eric Anderson. It's outside one and two now on Fry. Both teams played pretty much most of their rosters tonight between position players and the pitching staff. Rice and Stanford this weekend here at Reckling Park. LSU at Minute Maid Park. Swing and a miss and a strike out there, out number two here in the ninth inning. Also a tournament in southwest Houston in this Sugar Land area. Another five or six college teams in town for that tournament. Good job of the off-speed pitcher from yeah. the outside corner. Yeah, good movement there. The fly out and a strike out so far. Rice House pitcher, Reed Gallant. From Flower Mound Marcus High School, up there in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. This is Alex Malazzo at the plate for LSU. Limited at bats, but made the most of them, hitting over 500 right now in the year with three RBIs. One of the catchers on the LSU Tiger roster from Zachary, Louisiana. Swung on, popped up, but that will stay in. And out number three here in the top of the ninth inning. So good job out of the bullpen for Reed Gallant. And we go to the bottom of the ninth here. To his name as he now toes the rubber for the final three outs in this eight-run ball game, 16 to four. Excuse me, 14-run ball game. 12-run ball 12 game. 12-run ball game, yeah. It's, it's been a long night. Yeah, it's been, been a long night. night. I was actually double-checking, too. Yeah, I was, I was sitting there in my head. Yeah, it's been a big, big night for LSU, and Rice will uh, put this one behind them, as will LSU, and move on to the next one coming up on Friday night for both teams. <laughs> ben Royo at the plate for... The Rice Owls hitting 217. Number nine hitter in the lineup. He had a single and scored back in the third inning. Popped up to the first baseman in the fifth. Struck out looking in the seventh. You talked about LSU being able to score in bunches. Every time they've scored four crooked innings tonight as they have quadrupled Rice's offensive output as we see a fly out to right field for the first out. Big Brown underneath that one to bring it in, out number one here in the ninth inning. LSU pitchers have struck out nine owls tonight. They've used five pitchers. Elmer's being the fifth one here. Trayton Rank at the plate, leadoff hitter. Began tonight as the starting right fielder and then moved over to first base. Singled in his last at bat in the seventh inning. That's his lone hit of the night. Four runs, eight hits for the Rice Owls. 16 runs, 11 hits for LSU tonight.
Right, couldn't hold up there. One and two now on the Owls' leadoff hitter. Excitement coming from the LSU dugout as they have the Owls down to their final out. Yeah, strikeout number 10 tonight for LSU as Rank goes chasing on that one. Yeah, dirty spinner of the outside corner, and you see him out on his front foot going after it. Owls down to their final out tonight here at Reckling Park. One one called strike. One and two count now on Kite McDonald. Off the glove, Helmers over to first base, not in time. Kite McDonald safe at first base. So you got to fight all the way down, Rice. Fight never dies is one of their sayings here that we have seen today. And we take one more look at this. It's a line drive right back to Helmers. A protecting motion with the glove to knock it down. I mean, the throw over to first, just missing getting the final out. So the Owls will keep things going here with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Here's Gallo. Try to keep it alive for Rice. Starting second baseman tonight. Did do a double play in the first inning. Reach on an error in the third. And a couple of ground outs in the sixth and seventh inning. Trying to get that bat going early in this season. Right now hitting 136. Sometimes all it takes is a couple of good at-bats, well-struck balls to get that confidence back. Exactly. And McDonald, you know, stealing second base on that pitch home, just trying to find the little things. Obviously, this is a game... They have 16 runs, you have four. You have all the walks, the hit-by-pitches. There are things that you can easily look at, say were a problem tonight. But what you can focus on is whatever bright spots you can. And it's how you were able to push a run across, three runs across against Kate Anderson, taking advantage of errors, meaning when they made mistakes, you capitalized. And then here, you know, continuing to find all the way down to the end, a hustle single in the ninth inning. Called third strike, and that'll do it. As Pierce Gallo goes down on strikes, the 11th recorded by the LSU pitching staff tonight. And that'll do it here at Reckling Park tonight as the LSU Tigers.